Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to take a look at, a quick look that is, how to slug an air gun barrel. I'm doing this because I've been asked over the years, you know, via text or email to show how you do it. So I'm gonna put a video out finally showing how you do it. It's simple, it's quick, this does not take long, it's not hard, it doesn't take a rocket science to do it. Anyone with somewhat of a mechanical uh, skill level or skill set can do this. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. But All right, guys, in today's quick little demonstration, here we have the original 17HM Air. This is a 172 caliber barrel, not a 177. I know 17 is generic and it typically means 177 in the air gun world, but in the powder burner world, 177 doesn't exist, 172 does. So this is a firearm 172 barrel. Now, let me move a few steps forward. It does not matter what kind of barrel you have. It's a barrel. So, what we're going to do, we're going to learn how to slug an air gun barrel. Very simple. All right, first thing we need to do is to remove the barrel. All right, guys, once you get the barrel out of the receiver, or if it's a brand new barrel, here's your barrel, you're going to need a couple of items. Most important, a micrometer, not calipers. I'm going to repeat that again, not calipers. Calipers are not accurate enough to measure a bullet. They're only accurate plus or minus a thousandth of an inch. We're looking for plus or minus some ten thousands. So here's one called the Shars. I'll put a picture in picture up here. This is what you guys need. Calipers, most important. More important than the barrel, more important than the bullets. You need a micrometer, not calipers. I know a lot of people don't have mics that have calipers. Calipers are only accurate to a thousand. So if it's 257, you're only accurate 256 to 258. It's too much. You need it to read 10 thousandths. Moving on, you'll need some type of hammer or mallet. Here's a little jeweler's hammer. You will need a punch set. Now, the punch set, the punch you're going to use is gonna be smaller than the diameter of the bore. Obviously, you wouldn't wanna use a 177 and have a half inch punch or three eighths punch. It's not gonna fit down the barrel. You also don't necessarily want it rubbing the sides of the barrel, which most punches are not anywhere close to caliber size. They're either gonna be way over or way under per caliber. So let you guys figure that out on your own. I'm doing a 172, so I am going to grab a punch that is smaller than 172. Here's one, I'm going to use brass. Brass is softer than steel. Brass does not really ding up rifling like everybody thinks that it does. That's why they use brass cleaning rods, brass everything for guns because it doesn't ding it up. You stand less of a chance, plus you're using something that's smaller than the bore. We don't have to worry about rifling. I know a lot of people are gonna comment, you're gonna tear up your rifling. Well, I don't know about you guys, but in the years I've been doing this, I've never destroyed a gun by sizing the bore with the punch. Never, ever, ever. Ever. Okay. You don't necessarily need a punch. If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you can get a long rod and use that. Moving on, you're going to need a can of lube of some sort. It could be Slick 50, it could be whatever you decide to use. I use Slick 50 for a lot of things. Probably going to need some Q tips. The last but not least most important thing that you're going to need are unsized bullets or slugs for your barrel, unsized. At this moment, I do not know what size this is. 
but I know it's 172 caliber. I know these bullets that are 172 that I cast, they drop about 1735. So they're almost close to 174, which is perfect. This barrel should not be anywhere near 174. If it is, we got a problem. You'll find that out by dropping the bullet in and you can sit there and push it. The last thing you're going to need is a cleaning rod. I'm going to use a cleaning rod for this demonstration. A cleaning rod that's appropriate for the caliber. Let's go. All right, guys, here we go. Next thing you want to do is grab your mic and an unsized bullet. We're going to pre-measure it. This measures right at 17305. It's going to say 1730. There you go. Okay, now that we have the measurement, you want something soft on the floor? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the unsized bullet. I'm going to put a little bit of lube on a Q-tip. Actually, I'm going to put a lot. I'm going to soak it. All right. I'm just going to swab the inside of the barrel. There's lots of lube in there now. I am then going to rub some of that lube between my fingers, get my fingers nice and oily, oily. Take the bullet, rub the bullet around, and we are now going to take our barrel, the bullet, the punch, and we're going to start the bullet in the barrel. So the bullet is now in, I'm just going to gently tap on the punch, the lubed bullet. There we go. Okay, the bullet is in. I am now going to take my cleaning rod. There we go. All right, there we go. Be careful when the bullet, when you're getting ready to push the bullet out, you don't just ram it and it shoots across your garage. But here we go. There it is, it's out. Okay, cleaning rod, barrel. I'll try to, it's such a little bullet, man. There you go. You can see marks on it and we're going to measure it. So now let's see here. One, seven, two, two. I'm gonna give you some numbers. So what you wanna do is you wanna spin the bullet around and measure all the different dimensions. 169, 17215, 1722. There's 169 even. So 1722. Two. And that's exactly what me and Doug measured when we first did this barrel. There you go, guys. 1722. Two. So it's only two ten thousandths over spec. That's all there is to slugging a barrel. Here's a bullet pre slug in the barrel. This is unsized, 173. Here is the bullet after, 1722. All right, guys, that's it for the how-to uh, slug and air gun barrel. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Hope it was short and sweet and to the point. Hope it answered all of your questions. If it did not, please leave a comment down in the comment sections or leave a question down in the comment sections. Um, again, it's pretty straightforward, guys. and. You know, uh, one of the reasons why you want to do this for us slug guys, not so much the pellet guys, you don't need to do this for pellet guys. You can, but you don't need to. For the slug guys, and I'm going to make a video about something on this line. The problem with slugs is you have a lot of variations and a lot of different things. And a lot of times people buy 
ammo and it doesn't work well and the first thing we tell them is have you slugged your barrel and most people say well it's 257 it's 308 it's 457 it came from the factory and they're putting in a home cast bullet that's probably sized to 459 <laughs> i've seen that 458 and they wonder why they're not getting good accuracy well you're shooting the bullet two ten two thousands over bore so it's pretty tight you're using the barrel to size all that lead down that's a no-no um again taking a look at the powder burner guys remember we're behind they're ahead by a lot when they shoot lead bullets in powder burners normally at slower velocities they go up a thousandth of an inch nominal diameter meaning a 308 winchester rifle will shoot a 309 cast bullet but they also are using 20 25 30 35,000 psi when they're shooting lead bullets us on the other hand we're only dealing with 3 to 4500 psi can we shoot a bullet that's oversized yes is it good for accuracy no it's not that's been proven so we want to stay close to bore diameter so for us, we want to shoot a bullet that's very close to bore diameter. So if you're getting 3081, we want to shoot a 3081. We don't want to shoot a 3078, a 3079. We want to shoot at least bore diameter. So anyway, not to get too far ahead of myself, that's all we got for today. That's how you slug a air gun barrel and hope you guys enjoyed it. See you on the next one.